Oh joy, another Monday Night Raw review. What's up guys, Chase Oliver here, bringing you another edition of my Raw reviews on my channel. And let's just get started with this one, shall we? So some somber, depressing news hit the IWC and YWC today when we found out that Daniel Bryan will not be able to compete at Money in the Bank. So therefore, he has to surrender the WWE Heavyweight Championship. And all I got to say is get well soon, Bryan. But here's my complaint with the opening segment for Raw. Instead of Monday Night Raw having Daniel Bryan come out to the ring and cutting a very good, emotional, heroic speech, how even if he does surrender those titles, he will be back and better than ever and having the crowd be involved in it and going, yes, 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 for Daniel Bryan after he surrenders those titles. No, 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 no. Instead of that, let's just have Triple H and Stephanie do what they normally do, kick off Raw and bore us. Now, you guys know me. I love me some Triple H. Ugh. Again, with these two morons talking in the ring. Oh, Daniel Bryan's a B-plus player, blah, blah, blah. How many times are we going to use that line? How many times are we going to use that line? Oh, Daniel Bryan's a B-plus player. I'm sorry. The opening segment for me, it didn't really do much. I like the little touch that they have throughout the night. They have the titles hanging from the ring, you know, using that little thing they used for TLC 2013. I, I like that. And the Money in the Bank match now is for the WWE Heavyweight Championship. And of course, Alberto Del Rio is in it. Who gives a shit? But for me and me alone, the only reason why I deem this promo segment a little bit good is because my boy, Randall Keith Horton, he doesn't need, he doesn't need to wrestle any jobbers to get into the Money in the Bank. No, he's earned his right to be in the Money in the Bank. Smart move there, Triple H. That was the one thing that made sense from this whole promo segment. Other than that, I felt the kickoff to Raw was very lackluster. I'm actually liking a little bit of the Cody Rhodes and Goldust storyline. Yeah, is Goldust teaming up with some jobbers we rarely care about? Yeah, he is. But I liked it. You know, they actually have really good emotion coming out of this. You know, every time Goldust loses a match, he looks pissed off. Every time Cody sees his brother lose a match, he looks pissed off. And I, I just feel that this is a, somewhat of a decent mid-card feud because it could go either way. You know, you could have Cody turn heel from this. You could have Goldust turn heel from this. I like this. I'm actually growing a little bit fond towards it. It's not a great storyline so far, but it's okay from what we normally get by the WWE, so I'm fine with it, and I like the backstage promo that they added a layer to it. Like, normally, for if it was a mid-card storyline, they would just have it where Goldust and Cody would look upset, and we wouldn't get a follow-up, but they're, they're, lit they're hyping you up for next week's Raw. You know, Cody said that he found a partner that can you know, measure up to the name that is gold dust and the magnificent sets is him. Is it Booker T? We don't know yet, but in all honesty, I really, really liked what they did with Cody Rhodes and gold dust this week and not much to complain from it. Out comes Paige. Out comes Alicia Fox. This is becoming the women's version of Dolph Ziggler versus Kofi Kingston. We are seeing it on NXT. We are seeing it on Superstars. We are seeing it on SmackDown. Now we're seeing it on Monday Night Raw. I feel bad for Paige. Alicia Fox is doing a good job entertaining us. That's for damn sure. So why isn't she Divas Champion? I don't know. The mystery of the WWE. Sometimes it can't be solved. Sheamus beats Bad News Barrett. And if you want my initial reaction to this, go watch my Raw review last week where I talked about Dolph Ziggler and Alberto Del Stinko. And I talked about how stupid it was for Ziggler to lose and how dumb it was for Del Rio to win. That's how I feel about Sheamus and Bad News Barrett. Maybe this will lead to a Sheamus heel turn. Maybe Sheamus will turn heel in the Money in the Bank ladder match. I highly doubt it. Please, WWE, at the end of this year, I am begging you. Sheamus is talented. I do like Sheamus. I don't hate Sheamus like most people. I think he has some sort of talent in his body. But this motherfucker is the worst face I've ever seen. Please, please, WWE gods, Triple H, ugh. Please, if you love me and you want me to be entertained and actually hate someone for good reason, give me Sheamus as a heel. Oh, my brother, testify. RVD is for sure not getting a paycheck. I'm so happy Cesaro won this Money in the Bank qualifier match. I was so afraid that they were going to give this to Rob Van Dam, and I was like, oh, no. Because, like, if you looked at the Money in the Bank ladder match so far, you know, you have Randy Orton, you have Alberto Del Stinko, and you have Sheamus. All right, who is the guy that's going to be giving the high spots for the fans to go, ooh, and ah at? 
out of those three, none of those motherfuckers are high spotters. And I looked at this and I just said, oh my god, please do not let RVD win this match. Will RVD be fun to watch in a Money in the Bank ladder match? Oh, absolutely, no doubt about it. But I wanted Cesaro to win because believe it or not, people, I am a Cesaro fan. I like Cesaro. He's one of my favorite indie talent guys. For all those people who think I hate independent wrestlers, or I love me some Antonio Cesaro, or just Cesaro, or Claudio Castagnoli, whatever you want to call him by. He's one of my faves. And I was just so worried that RBD was going to hit a frog splash. One, two, three, RBD going into the money in the bank. But thank the heavens, Lord, Cesaro won this match. And you best believe the two people so far I'm rooting for in this match is my boy Randy Orton and Cesaro. Those are the two guys that I hope win this WWE Heavyweight Championship match at the Money in the Bank pay-per-view. Poor Damian Sandow. Poor Damian Sandow. What in the blue hell happened to him? The Layla and Summer Rae segment felt very refreshing to me. I like it when two divas go at it in a fight. This is what it felt like to me. Two divas beating the crap out of each other. A nice little cat fight. Summer Rae... You know, getting the upper hand. Layla looks like a hot mess. My only complaint was that Layla looked fine when she came out with uh, Fandango later that night. But other than that, I felt they did a good job with Summer Rae and Layla. Definitely piquing my interest a little bit. I hope maybe they make out later on. But that that's just a dream. That's just a pipe dream that may not happen. But if it leads to a Summer Rae and Layla match, at least they're putting some effort into this. So I like what they did with Summer Rae and Layla. Very refreshing to do little side feuds with the Divas. So... Kudos on the WWE on that. Woo, woo, woo. Sorry, bro. Rusev just crushed you. What a bright spot for Monday Night Raw. Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns. Wow. This shows what the future of the WWE can be if they book these guys correctly and they write for them correctly. And boy, Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns. Yes, Dean Ambrose was the better promo man tonight, but I liked both of their individual promos on Seth Rollins. I really, really did enjoy the mic work that these two had with in the ring with each other. I love the beat down on 3MB after Drew McIntyre was talking shit on Twitter, how they were the only three-man group left. I really did like what The Shield did here. I felt they got their message across, and they said, that well, we're coming for you, Seth Rollins. Once you're done talking, we're coming for you. And now let's get on to Seth Rollins going into the middle of the ring to address of why he turned on the shield and he has some new entrance music i like the intro because it's a heavy metal type feeling and it feels like something that seth Rollins would come out to the song does not sound legit it doesn't sound like someone who is a part of an evolution faction hopefully they change that up soon that's just me i hope they do change it up soon but i really did like what seth Rollins did on the microphone it wasn't a masterpiece but it made sense talking about how they would be nothing without him, and he did it for his career, and this is just a business, and sometimes you have to make business moves you don't like. I really liked this promo by Seth Rollins. I felt he got his point across. Michael Cole was kind of a hindrance during the promo, but I really did like it, and after he was done, he calls out the Shield, and I thought they were going to do a smart little thing here and have it where, you know, the Shield will come out, and then Seth Rollins would be all snarky and be like, oh, I got security in front of here. I would have liked that. I really would have liked if, you know, Seth Rollins got the security, and he's all standing there in his black suit, and he's like, <laughs> you guys can't touch me. I'm smarter than you guys are. You can't get me. Uh, that, that was one of my only complaints was that they did have a little bit of a brawl and Rollins did get touched by the Shield. I would have made sure Rollins not get touched by the Shield whatsoever. I would have waited for that moment until Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose actually get their hands on him, literally. But as the Shield are making their way to the ring, lights go out and here comes Bray Wyatt, who said earlier tonight he has reborn the Wyatt family attack, you know, whatever's left of the Shield and Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose. And, you know, a lot of people were thinking, oh, there's a third member in the Shield. Everyone saw that picture on Twitter of Bo Dallas <laughs> traveling with the Shield. And so everyone thought we were going to believe in the Shield. <laughs> I kind of wish Bo Dallas came out to save the Shield because, oh, my God. You smell that? You smell that in the air? It smells like the same old shit. <laughs> Fucking John Cena coming out to the damn ring. Oh, God. Freaking running down that damn ramp, clearing out the Wyatt family like, man, I've been fucking burying you guys for three months now. I don't know how to handle you. Oh, 
God, please tell me Cena and Wyatt is over. Please tell me Cena and Wyatt is over. It looks like it's over. It seems like it's over, but Cena coming out just got me scared for a minute. And it turns out in our main event tonight, Cena will be an honorary Shield member for a night as he teams up with Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose to take on the Wyatts. Oh, God. And the one thing that scares me is that Cena might win at Money in the Bank because there was a backstage promo segment after this with Stephanie and Triple H talking, and Stephanie started to say she was bugged out by John Cena and how John Cena really made her mad. And what came to my mind, and I'm sure everyone else's, was thinking, holy shit, Cena might win and feud with the authority. Cena might be that overcoming babyface to overcome the odds that the authority has a sex against him. Oh, God. Please, WWE, don't do this to us. Just give us a break from Cena for a little bit. Please. Please. Nah. It ain't gonna happen. <laughs> Overall, though, I like what they did with Seth Rollins tonight. The Shield tonight. Sorry, Wyatt family. You guys didn't do it for me. And sorry, John Cena. You definitely didn't do it for me. Wow, Jack Swagger won a match on Monday Night Raw. Who would have thunk it? I'm so happy that Swagger won a match, and I hope this is his gimmick. How good of a gimmick would it be where he faces people that he wants to deport? And not only that, you you get promo segments afterwards where Jack and Zeb carry Santino, whoever they beat, and they throw him in the back of the trunk, and we get little video segments on the network or WWE.com or YouTube where they try to send him back to the border or try to board him on a boat. I think that would be Excellent. I hope they keep up this gimmick with Jack Swagger where he tries to deport people. I think this would be a great little lower card thing to have on this show. I'm surprised Swagger won. I thought Santino was going to hit the Cobra and then the little trumpet and all that other crap. But I'm so glad Jack Swagger won. I just hope and pray they do something with this guy because I see talent in Jack Swagger. I know a lot of you guys don't. I I think Jack Swagger is a pretty solid wrestler, pretty solid hand, can do well in the mid-card division. Not a guy in the main event, but someone that you can put in the main event scene to get one or two title matches, and they would be good title matches, and they will subdue the fans for a little bit. You know, that's where I see Jack Swagger, and I really hope they do stuff with Jack Swagger more and more in the future. Hello, guys. Chase Bolivar here. And I'm here to bring down the negativity of the YWC and IWC. Yay! But before I go on to argue with Chase about all his points, let me talk about Bo Dallas, as I'm the number one Bo Lever here in the YWC. And boy, Bo Dallas, what a significant wrestler. Six and Bo, this guy is in the WWE. He's almost close to breaking Goldberg's record of being 187-0. He's almost there, and he will reach it. Do you know why, people? Because he believes. He believes anything's possible, and he's going to do it. He is. He's going to break Goldberg's record and become 187 and bow. And before you guys ask, I know you guys are saying, it's actually 6-0, Chase Bolivar. No, it isn't, people. It's six and bow. There's no O's and zeros in life. Only heroes and winners. And that's what Bo Dallas is. A hero and a winner. Now, let me just talk about something. This is going to be a bow rant here. Yes, a bow rant. Sick and tired of you people out there in the YWC saying Paige is bland and boring. Paige is not bland or boring. Paige is a wonderful specimen, one of my favorite wrestlers, and as well as one of Chase Oliver's favorite wrestlers, something we can agree on, but I'm sick and tired of people not giving Paige a chance. Guys, right now, Paige is just a seed in the dirt. She's not ready to grow yet. Let's just face it. She's a seed in the dirt. One day, someone will grab that water pail, and then someone will pour water on that seed, and Paige will blossom into a beautiful flower. The hate and negativity calling her bland and boring won't make her become that flower. It won't. So what you need to do, people, is support her. Support Paige. Tell Paige she is amazing and awesome. 
Stop calling her bland and boring. Stop saying that she's a waste of a Divas champion right now because Paige is awesome. One day that pail will be brought down on her and the water will sprinkle and you guys will agree with me. I think Paige is awesome. I don't think the WWE needs to do anything else with her. Let her keep winning matches. Let her keep being dominant. I think it's something different and refreshing and I think it's going to lead to an awesome match between her and AJ Lee. I can't wait for that match. But I'm telling you people right now, just give Paige time. Trust me, you will see why she's awesome. You will see why the WWE, what they're doing with her, is awesome. And you will see why the WWE is awesome. All you got to do, people, is believe. Well, the main event of Monday Night Raw, we actually had a match. Yeah, we, we actually had a wrestling match. When was the last time you remember Raw ending with, with the show being an actual main event match, not just like thrown together promo segment. It was just like an actual ending to Monday Night Raw. We got an actual match. It went the full distance. John Cena and The Shield end up being the Wyatt Family solid six-man tag match. But my problem here is that it just felt lackluster to ending to Raw. Like, I felt like you could have had Rollins and Authority come out to attack these goons after the, after the match. But instead, you know, we just have... Send the fans go happy and make sure Wyatt stays out there so Cena can beat him in the dark match type of deal. Like, that's how it felt like to me. I I just don't know. I felt like they could have done a little bit more with the ending to this edition of Monday Night Raw. In, in my personal opinion, it just felt like let's just send the fans home happy. But at least we got a match that was actually advertised for the main event. And it got an actual definitive finish. So I'm not going to complain too much. But overall, this Monday Night Raw... It wasn't really a great episode or a good episode. It was just an okay episode. I mean, they didn't really build much up to the Money in the Bank. We got a bunch of rewind matches, which means we got the same matches that we have been seeing weeks in and weeks out. So, you know, that's where it kind of bugged me is like some of the promos were pretty solid for this Raw. I like some of the promos for this Raw. But when we get the same type of matchup, like how many times do I have to watch Paige versus Alicia Fox? How many times do I have to watch Cesaro versus RVD? Sheamus versus Bad News Barrett. I mean, you've done these matches so many times throughout all your different programmings. Main event, NXT, Superstars, Smack It Down. I mean, just, just for me, it, it's like you can do a lot more. That, that's all I'm asking for is just do a lot more. Give us more refreshing matchups to make this Raw a little bit easier to sit through because most of the time, I'll be honest with you, when I see a match that I've already seen, it's kind of a hard watch because it's like I already know what moves are going to do. I don't really need, sometimes I don't really need to watch the matches. I get up a lot to do other stuff. I go do sit-ups and push-ups instead, you know. So all I'm asking for is a little bit more refreshing matchups. But like I said, the promos were pretty solid for this Raw. I thought WWE did a good enough job kind of getting you hyped up for the Money in the Bank. We got four more entrants inside of the Money in the Bank match for the title. We'll have to wait and see till next week, but the ending to Raw, it didn't really get me excited for next week's Raw. But what did you guys think of Monday Night Raw? Comment down below your thoughts of what you thought about Monday Night Raw. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching this video. Follow me on Twitter at ChaseOver68. Check out my website, ChillingWithChase.com. Go check out all the other videos on my channel if you haven't already. I'll see you all next time. Tomorrow's a Q&A, so if you haven't sent in your questions, do so. Do so, so that way you can get answered by moi in my beautiful Q&As that I love doing so much. Anyways, guys, I'm out of here. Have a good Monday night. Peace!